Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, with your spirit. and welcome as we come together to celebrate this first Sunday of Advent, which is also the first day in the church's liturgical year. We move from season C now back to season A. And this season invites us as well into a time of renewal and recommitment to the Lord. And so as we begin this Advent journey, let's start by asking the Lord for the grace to be able to journey well through Advent. And maybe for those fragilities and weaknesses we see within ourselves, let's ask the Lord now for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The word which Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills and all the nations shall follow to it and many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide for many peoples and they shall beat their swords and plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. We shall, we shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within our gates, O Jerusalem. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. For Israel's witness it is to praise the name of the Lord 
They were set the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. We shall go rejoicing to the house house of the Lord. For the peace of Jerusalem pray. May they prosper those who love you. May peace abide in your walls and security be in your towers. We shall go rejoicing to the house house of the Lord. Lord. For the sake of my family and friends, let me say, peace upon you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek good things for you. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, You know what hour it is, how it is full time now for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. Let us then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves becomingly as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us see O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they did not know until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in a field, one is taken and one is left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One is taken, one is left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the householder had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It has been a year of darkness and some light for many people in South Africa. We all know too well by now the frustration of being left in the dark. Call it whatever you want. Load shedding, blackouts, power failures. They have become for us a way of life. Most of us, I suspect, know more now about solar power and batteries and generators and the price of diesel than we did perhaps a year ago. We now live in a state in which we are, in many ways, prepared for darkness, prepared for power failure, prepared for blackouts. St. Paul and Matthew's Gospel use the theme of darkness and light. Because you see, darkness and light is not just about what ESCOM does to us, but it's also part of our spiritual lives. Like with power outages, We are being invited to be prepared spiritually. 
darkness and light are not are not just about what we see it is also about what we do saint ignatius loyola often referred to the things we keep in the dark you see for saint ignatius the experience that we don't want to speak about the things we don't want to look at the memories we suppress are all things we should be looking at in fact he would say that this is a sign of the bad spirit at work when these things happen when we are not wanting to look at things or suppressing things they gain an inordinate power over us and we can use a lot of energy trying to keep them buried trying to keep them in the dark ignatius said that the good spirit was at work when things we keep buried are brought into the light he tells us when we do this it brings not only light but also freedom a freeing like nothing else and so saint ignatius invites us to keep alert to the ways that we trick ourselves into keeping things secret keeping things in the dark but he was also a great one for telling people that they should be prepared because ignatius was utterly convinced that the best spirituality we could have is one that keeps us reflecting all the time on our experience and when we do that we see how god is at work how god is always trying to draw us into the light and therefore into freedom and sometimes this happens in the most unexpected moments in the day when we might even think we are being plunged into what seems to be darkness and so at the beginning of this season of advent you might want to ask yourself if you do take time to notice god because advent is asking us as that gospel puts it so succinctly to be on the watch to be alert to be looking for god how might you be each day better prepared to notice god at work do you perhaps need to put some structure into your day so that you have time not a lot of time maybe just 5 or 10 minutes to pause and to look at your day and to see how god perhaps was working in your life in the season of advent we wait expectantly with great hope for the coming of the messiah we are not only trying to notice god's daily presence but also advent tells us look and see how god is waiting for us sometimes we think that we must go looking for god but often we don't find god perhaps because we're not looking for the god who is waiting for us and all we have to do is notice to be alert and so during this time of advent as well can you allow yourself to be found by god not go looking for god but allow god to find you where you are at this point in your life finally in advent we are being encouraged to let the light of god break through into our lives let the light of god show us how we can speak about what we need to speak about how we can look at the things that perhaps we've kept hidden how how we can call to memory those things perhaps that we want to suppress 
because when we do this, we begin to see more than what we have been seeing. We begin to glimpse the fullness of light. We begin to experience the fullness of love. And we are always moving to a greater freedom, the freedom that God wants us to have. Can you do that in this time of Advent? Will you allow yourself to be moved by the Lord into the freedom that he desires for you? This first Sunday of Advent is a God-given opportunity for us to make a new beginning. A new church year starts. A new journey to welcoming Christ at Christmas. A new opportunity to move from darkness to light. How will you grasp today, at the very beginning of this season, this year, the opportunity that God offers you? How will you live these weeks of Advent fruitfully, noticing God's presence, allowing God to find you, and moving into the light of freedom the place where the Lord wants you to live. So let's make a profession of faith now as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so right at the beginning of this new church year, as we enter into this Advent season, let's bring to the Lord what we desire as we pray together our intercessions. For the Church, that the season of Advent will bring about in her members renewed hope as we seek to live more fully in the light of God's love and freedom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our world, that all would seek equal justice for everyone and an end to discrimination of any kind. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who gather to celebrate the Eucharist today, that we would welcome the opportunity to start afresh, to recommit ourselves to the Lord who seeks us out and desires that we live to the full. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our country, we pray for an end to dishonesty, corruption, and damaging politicking. We pray for leaders who desire to serve and not to be served. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are sick or housebound, that they will experience the healing touch of Jesus through us and our care for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of new beginnings, we give you thanks for the season of Advent that we enter into. And we pray today that you listen to the prayers we make, those we speak out in the prayer in the heart of each one of us, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for God's true church. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your many gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and all the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as together we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, 
Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. We pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. My soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.